Today's video is all about Alephium, scalable for devs, secure for users, decentralized for all. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive into this project, looking into the team, the tokenomics, utility, and overall value proposition, and we're going to be figuring out whether this project has what it takes to make it to our portfolio for the up and coming bull run. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the altcoins looking for opportunities. Whether we go up or down, bearish or bullish, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is stay one step ahead of the market so that we can capitalize on any of the volatility. And if you appreciate the strategy, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Guys, we're looking for opportunities, of course. And the question is, is Alephium the opportunity that we're looking for right now obviously based on the, the front landing page here it looks pretty good you know of course scalable for devs secure for users decentralized for all you guys know that i'm a big proponent of decentralization and i do appreciate projects that put that at, at the front front and focus on decentralized um utility all right let's continue going down let's see what we also we got here by the way we're going to be using this uh, the website the website itself as our main platform for this research uh to obviously gives us an opportunity to critique the website to see if it has all of the essentials in order to get fundamentally bullish here and i like the fact that it starts off pretty strong innovative sharing meets expressive utxo which is a standard that bitcoin uses of course and if uh, efficient proof of less work proof of work but less work so there's a point of differentiation here with this proof of work model to secure a scalable dap for real world use cases of course you guys know i also like the real world use case because in the real world we have issues we have got problems that we're trying to solve and if a software solution can solve the problem guys there's a value there there's value proposition so let's continue let's keep on scrolling down what we got let's see what we got here um being your elephium journey start building start contributing start mining what most uh, it, what's interesting to me is the contribution apply for a grant to develop your own project on Alephium. receive rewards so this is good i like the fact that they are putting a bit of emphasis on the development this is also part of the development start building but also the co contribution essentially is they are willing to you know aid some of the development and the um the development of their ecosystem is directly tied to the utility of their coin so this is what's very important with the layer one you know they want to build their their ecosystem so that it has more value and more uh, utility and that is a big part of the network effect so what we really want to see here is how the ecosystem is um doing here so hopefully they have some information there with regards to their ecosystem technology um scalable sharded which is obviously an important thing um when we're talking about you know um the 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 speed the, uh, the alephium enables um support over one 10,000 transaction per second while preserving a seamless single chain user experience no you know no um layer twos or anything like that to um you know improve this the, the scalability which is obviously something that we've been seeing with other networks um using requiring layer twos to make it a little bit more user friendly and that kind of stuff so pretty good here um alephium offering uh, a solution to a mainstream problem with larger networks let's keep on going down maybe Maybe we can get into the more detail section here let me open up let's see if i can open this up in a new tab uh, oh it's just a pop-up all right all, all good sharding um and it shows and explains from a technical perspective what sharding is and the overall consensus and the alg speakable algorithm so this is good very technical stuff if you're interested in technicals obviously they got you covered here um efficient in energy consumption i think this is where we can kind of focus a little bit more of um of our energy uh no pun intended here alephium's proof of less work is a simple consistent and robust consensus mechanism so what it focuses on is the um energy consumption over 87 percent basically is, is reduced by 87 percent compared to classic proof of work um you know implementations and this is really interesting because you see how they differentiate their proof of work with less proof of work which 
which meaning which simply means that you're going to be doing less work for the same same uh result which of course we that's what we want we're seeing a lot of the layer ones come up with their own unique way of justifying energy consumption right of course um, looking at the useful proof of, proof of work which is a hot idea hot concept coming out right now of course a lot of the layer ones are uh, talking about usefulness of their you know their hashing and their you know their mining um and then all of a sudden over here we have an efficiency aspect from the programming side of things right so more details let's see what we got another nice pop-up that you can kind of read and you know mull through and kind of get get your uh, ideas from pretty good stuff okay programmable and secure this is obviously an interesting thing let's see if they get into it right here in this paragraph a lithium state um utx model which is combines the advantages of uh traditional utxo of course account models like bitcoin uh like those found in ethereum and smart contracts while leveraging the security benefit of utxo models uh, for assets so it looks like it has a combination of what makes ethereum good and what makes bitcoin good and the utxo model combines these advantages and and pretty good so i'm interested right of course its own virtual machine pro programming language and i'm glad that they got into it because i was expecting it to be come here because it is programmable and secure no doubt so it does have that smart contract capability but at the same time, because of that, um, it needs a virtual machine, very similar to how other layer ones have. And of course, they have their own language, a proprietary language that, you know, can be um, that is used to create applications on the Alephium network. Now, for me, you know, as a developer myself, I get what's happening here. And for me, um, honestly, this starts to become a question of resistance or friction. You know, you want developers to get involved into your ecosystem. Now you're going to start asking them to learn a new language, despite if you feel that it's easy to learn and it's you know type of thing and uh, the real question is is what's the utility behind having a whole new language is it actually something that you expect people to learn and so uh, meaning the developers and is it worth learning in the sense that is it actually giving you an edge to learn a whole new language and in this case you need a whole new sdk uh, and its performance is optimized programming language of course you need a you know M uh, mev uh, we're designed to build and secure measures eliminating common attacks and vectors and of course every programming language that comes out here in the crypto space and web 3 um, they're going to have their own value proposition and they're going to have their own arguments as to why they came up with their own language just remember that this is where things get a little bit interesting because again in order to get this mass adoption amongst uh the uh, development um community and to create more dApps they have to go and embark on a fixed cost which is putting in time to learn this language and for me that's a bit of friction is it really that necessary we've seen a lot of other layer ones take on the ethereum virtual machine because solidity being the main language there is pretty much now widely accepted as a standard so um, again not requiring to learn a new language if you learn the um, solidity language you can use it on all evm compatible blockchains because that language is used universal in that case and and in this case they came up with their own language and again more of a commitment that needs to happen here now is it an actual you know is it is it valuable here of this language is it actually act, add, adding value to the to the dApps and the overall network guys of course experience is going to tell that and people that are developers that are actually active creating these applications are going to give their feedback uh for me it's a bit of a mix i'm not too crazy about it you know i would have loved to see um you know it even compatible of course but we're gonna have to see how this technology actually plays out going forward if it w actually has a use case for a um you know, custom language here. Uh, some numbers, uh, shards running, okay, cool there um alf circulating and transactions executed all right if you want to check out their explorer i think it's uh not bad it could be a little bit better let's see what we got going on here we got it's a minimal like there's not much feature here to be honest i like to see the wallets and how many uh, tokens are uh, per wallet basically looking at the major holders and so on and for this case you need to go on a separate application and let me show you that application right now 
It's called the ALF Rich List, and this is a third-party application. It's not created by the development team, and some may argue that that's beneficial, given the fact that this third party doesn't have any stakes in the game, and in that case, um, yeah, we can rely on it a little bit more. But it doesn't mean that the uh, the accuracy of the of the numbers are there. So I'm just throwing it out there. This is called uh, the Elysium Rich List, and if you want to see the top holders, we can kind of scroll here, and we can see that the Elysium Bridge has a bit, because there is a a bridge where you can wrap up the ALF token uh, coin and get it onto Ethereum network, which is quite interesting. So we're, although it is not EVM compatible, we are able to basically shift over ALF into the Ethereum uh, network through a bridge and have it all wrapped up. And that's one way we can get access to that network itself. So if you if you like bridges and you like that whole idea, which you know it, it could be a value proposition in itself, um, you can see that there's some liquidity here about. Uh, 12.28 million in liquidity here uh, ready to go and we also have gate obviously major exchanges uh, maxi and then you have the liquidity pool and then if you keep on scrolling got a few fat accounts here uh, wallets holding quite a bit of course and we keep on scrolling and we see that there's quite a bit and then we have trade uh trade eager uh or ogre and then you keep on going down bitmart and you see what i mean so you're going to see that there are some heavy duty wallets here holding tokens now it's quite distributed e evenly you know fair launch pretty much fair launch we're going to talk about the tokenomics in a second and um overall distribution token distribution in a second coin distribution in a second but as we see here it's pretty um diverse and it's not too too bad and the, the um you can see that the the graph here is suggesting that the majority of the tokens are within the middle and they're all pretty balanced so it's not bad i would suggest that if you're into data and you like looking at these numbers that you know you spend some time here kind of you know um, doing a bit of math and doing a bit of um reflecting on what you see here overall for me personally it's not bad it's not bad of a scenario i don't see any major risks given that the majority of the tokens right now that are in the top wallets are held by exchanges to provide liquidity and and that's what we kind of want we want to be able to get in and out on these exchanges that they have enough tokens for us to take profit and buy and sell type of thing so that's a good sign that they're well funded all right so let's move on let's get back onto that website i know we kind of deviated a little bit and note that a lot of the information going forward uh could you know kind of take us away from the main website which means that the web main website doesn't have everything we need so far okay so we have to kind of like keep that in mind the website may need a little bit of attention here because um you know um, i'm not sure why they're relying on a third party type of application um to give us some of those uh, you know on-chain metrics right so we really want that uh let's keep on going here the wallet there is a wallet a desktop wallet extension and a mobile wallet that's what we need that's pretty much industry standard especially you know considering you're uh, considering that they want to boast the fact that they're completely decentralized of course within that realm we need to have self-custody done so let's move on ecosystem something more interesting given the fact that it's somewhat of a new project happening here their ecosystem or up-and-coming projects project let's put it that getting a lot of hype in the last little while we can see that the ecosystem is definitely growing okay so we got a few here um i would suggest that you uh, click around we got a wallet uh, um and then we have this one that i kind of went on let's do that together here and let's see what's going on you can see that there's a lot of a lot of different uh projects being built here pretty cool right like of, co of course they're not mainstream applications but this is how it begins guys we have a lithium toolkit we have the bridge we have alphabet um a challenge for outperforming the market so you've got lots of little lots of good little applications being built and developers getting on board which is good bridges DeFi. you can see the different um narratives and if you go back into this again you can click around and see what's going on you have welcome to a uh a in uh uh, bridging liquidity to life on Alephium. Uh, uh, um, so again, a lot of good things happening. At least they have something going for it. And for its size, it's definitely growing fast. So I I appreciate that. You know, and I, in this, we can kind of give it a bit of credit given the fact that they're putting up effort into uh, the development team. As you saw before, um, they're giving grants and doing their thing, trying to get, you know, uh, a robust ecosystem built. And that's going to give utility for the token, for the coin. So um, that for me, that's a good one. Let's continue. Partners, you got some good partners here, guys. And it doesn't look like they're trying to shield relationships that don't really are, are not really that strategic. 
right we have bitcoin association uh one thing that kind of uh, uh, stood out, stood out to me the utxo alliance not bad and a, a many 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 others here so when you see these um modest type of uh partners you kind of want to click around them that's exactly what i would suggest doing how are these partners actually helping each other out grow and what kind of relation mutual relationship they have to scale each other to the next level so i'm glad to see that and you know, i'm also glad to see that they're not claiming that you know exchanges are partners right they're not necessarily partners right they're 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 in a relationship here where one is a buyer one is a seller and one is the distributor right and this is exactly how it is so right here this is is how we can see a uh, relationship that they're working together and scaffolding which is good okay so we got a, some good uh, ecosystem things happening here both partners and projects are within the realm of their their size they're in their lane and they're healthy so that's good very good um now let's talk about these milestones the roadmap guys really i'm really uh, happy to see the roadmap here no doubt a lot of projects nowadays, especially when you're talking about, uh, let's call it, um, you know, fair to uh, fair launch type of thing. They feel like, you know, there's no need for accountability with regards to team, a membership, and of course, the milestones and everyday um you know um roadmap uh, goals now you can see that we they have them all listed all the ones of the past what i don't like is that they don't have anything for the future that is dated and that have a commitment now they've hit ma major milestones of the past great so they have a great track record hitting all targets now moving forward what's next they don't have any dates now i do understand putting dates is a bit of an issue especially especially in software uh, development i get it you know as a developer myself i understand how that works deadlines are very hard to meet in a lot of cases you can put all the effort and you can you know want to achieve it all in a very positive way and sometimes it just doesn't happen no matter how hard you try the reality is um a bit of a range or an idea of when the expectation should uh, you know be achieved that is very possible like even quarterly talk about you know end of the year mid-year you know the beginning of the year give us an idea of what you're focusing on on the current uh, at the current time it can't be that it's all all of this is being focused on all at once because then that's not a real clear plan and what we really want to see is what's the plan what are the steps that we're taking here going next it's not necessarily that we want to know exactly the date that they're going to be released it's just what we where are we putting all our efforts in in the immediate short term and for us that allows us to be bullish or maybe say stay neutral for a little while while they're ironing things out so a little bit more detail of course would be super super great here and maybe be remaining consistent with this with this style of execution would be great and be able to collapse these um years that of course they do matter but in the current state that we're in they don't really matter what matters is what they're doing today in this bull up and coming bull run we want to know what kind of great things they're going to be working on and releasing and you know how we can support the the ecosystem itself so that's my two cents there now we got some swag which is great you know you can visit the shop if you want to get all in on it that's cool stuff and then the community discord telegram twitter i went on the discord to ask a few questions very helpful very decent community you know I would have loved to see a little bit more hype and a little bit more engagement and of course you know the team having someone on there just you know you know getting that going would be great especially that they do have a, a, a fairly large community there would be awesome of course telegram they got linkedin now linkedin is where i want to kind of spend a bit of time give and medium is not a bad place to talk, have a bit of chat because i'm letting you know that a lot of the information that you kind of are looking for is going to be on the medium blog site which for me is not a great thing right we do have a docs let's go down to the resources we have docs where we can get some info okay we can click that and you can see we got some info there okay so let's keep that loaded and then we got the blog which i think that is the medium or is it that they're custom it's the medium this is the problem they they rely on external information a blog a blog service in order to give updates and for me that's not a good thing and seeing this dude right here and and seeing this you know this happening uh, the reality is is it that important if it was that important it should be on the website right it shouldn't be on a blog but of course i understand that takes time and commitment to keep the website up to date but that's the reality that's what needs to happen frequently asked questions i like that white papers are super super technical guys i was debating on whether i should bring up those white papers but 
they did a great job leaving the white paper super technical but didn't do the greatest job creating a nice simple layout of all the things that we need on their actual website again relying on medium so we're going to kind of leave the white papers alone now feel free to go check that out super super technical of course if that's your industry and you're you're able to understand it and you want to dig into it go right ahead but we're going to talk about um what we really need here um as far as um thinking about getting scaling in for a position on this project for the bull run okay so uh frequently asked questions not bad not bad okay it's part of the document the the um uh, this same document so we're seeing duplication so docs and fact is pretty much the same and then explore uh you can look at the code base bridge it's um the explorer which we already did there's wallets reward grants program we talked about and then the team let's click that let's see what we got here unfortunately it's all it is is images and names fine they could be you know valid these are valid names it could be if you click nothing happens and core developer nothing happens nothing happens nothing happens um and unfortunately a lot of us that are entering the space or maybe um we're trying to you know figure Figure out whether we want to scale in we want to know a bit about who's behind the project despite it being a fair launch okay and mind you it's not completely completely fair launch there is some reserves for the team and we're going to talk about co token distribution coin distribution in a second but what i'm trying to say here is that for me personally i want to know their history i'm not talking about you know where they came from necessarily or you know where they grew up i want to know like where they worked what uh, other projects they worked on who's in their inner circle what connections they may have because that would get us a little bit more interested and fundamentally bullish because that means that they're well established within the industry knowing their name is not really going to give it to me okay so i don't really care about what your name is i want to know where you come from in, as far as a professional perspective in that capacity okay so for me that's important so not clickable now of course you're going to say uh you're going to think well let's check out that linkedin now let's see if i can log in here quick and and get that happen we had a linkedin account and if you click that you're going to see that none of their profiles are um public so again all nice clickable Im images if you go to uh people and you start looking at who's involved in the industry none of this is clickable okay so you can't even really click on it to see um who they're of uh, coding stuff uh engineer and leave okay front end okay it's great but would be nice but i would like to know if you're involved were in, involved in any other projects in the past now with that being said linkedin and both website don't offer much information but there is again another blog post out there that um you know speak about the core contributors and again it's a medium blog post um again uh I, you shouldn't have to be part of uh, dig around this this deep to get some info now of course um this dude right here cheng um again oh, you, a phd a lot of good stuff here um very bullish uh, they got your github if you want to see some of his works how did you come across alephium a bit of um you know background and so on again uh, thomas more information uh, his interest if you want to know a little bit but again nothing related to clearly to his crypto background and other projects or companies that he's worked for or, or you know what i mean so i would have loved to know a little bit more a bachelor's degree in university of, in china okay great good stuff but more detail uh is it are they doxed if you're going to put an image like that and some random name not completely made uh, coming out of sweden and and this is the thing you know if you want individuals to take you super super seriously i think from a professional aspect providing some information is totally valid so i'm bullish if you read through this you know there's some good good numbers and some good background um you know things happening here with regards to what they're what they've been doing in the last few years in the crypto space and to, in, in web3 but uh, something more formal would be legit honestly that's where we take it to the next level it's from being good to being great right and that information will get you into that state of being great okay so let's get back to the main website let's get rid of um you know linkedin and all these other things what else do we got here we got the a blog of course and then this here this is a doc the documents they got a lot of information what i do like is this um, frequently asked questions section where they have a lot of literally frequently asked questions uh so the sharding the, the the lowest denomination transactions per second a lot of good things here and you know we know that it's fast and, and all that a lot of layer ones now claim out to be the fastest let's not argue about that 
they're all decently fast i get uh the roadmap again we talked about that this is all going to link to the roadmap and the fact that they expect people to you know sign up to twitter to get those updates okay that's fine but generally you should be able to uh, update the website every so often to keep those things very very uh up to date where can i monitor the status uh, you know what i mean where can i uh, query the api so a full nodes if you want to do a little bit about nodes the wallet mining network a lot of good information but nothing really what we need here you can talk about the tokens that's what you probably are like you know tokenomics are here but no they're getting technical here about the tokens which is good like fungible tokens non-fungible tokens which means that they're uh, obviously able to support nfts nft contracts uh, a lot of good stuff here very typical of a layer one so there's no point of me repeating what's you know the basics of layer one technology especially in the smart contract platform space you know you know it's very similar to ethereum in the sense that it offers these features but they claim to be better in many ways of course a lot of the layer ones are competing with so this is just another uh um, ethereum co competitor type of thing all right so a lot of good info um what else do we got here uh we talked about this uh price we'll talk about in a second and we'll go here a lithium that was the docs and again another one of this i got tabs guys i got tabs okay this right here is kind of cool consensus protocol has been implemented to ensure only lithium miners can mine validate transaction in an lithium this is called proof of less work so they found a way i'm not going to get into the technical here because honestly that that's their that's their thing right of course technical they're a tech team this is software development and engineering and I, we don't we shouldn't have to be engineers to, to understand their their basics and the basics here is is that they found a way to improve on the proof of work to minimize the amount of work that's all it is the less work and for us um that are in the crypto space we know the one of the biggest contentions is the fact that uh, you know proof of work is not efficient it, it does take up a lot of electricity so there's two ways to handle this and i mentioned this before either we can make the proof of work algorithm a lot better so that we do less work or we're going to make that work uh work a more valuable and useful and that's where you get the useful proof of work so we're seeing additions and we're seeing um you yeah, um, improvements to the work, oh, proof of work consensus mechanism that may um, give us more value in the future going forward so you got that that which is a very uh, very strong statement and you can see how over time the um, the reward how the rewards and the hash rate um, gets impacted I like this right here transaction fee transaction fees are a way of of network participants to incentivize miners to process their transaction faster what's interesting here is that the blockchain all transaction fees are burnt to keep the mining incentives equally distributed between all chains so what's really happening here is they try to combat the um the inflation aspect of things uh, by having um a burning mechanism that is healthy and this is where you can kind of see that over time you get the curve you get a a, a inflation curve T over four years you can see over time we are basically reducing uh the time-based reward emissions rate for the first four years uh evolves as follows so the emission rate it kind of diminishes and you get that inflationary aspect Aspect to it which is good okay so again more technicals and i think this actually gets into it this blog right here you can see i have to bounce around blogs to blogs which i don't really like it is simpler okay it is simpler because so basically the reason why they designed this blockchain to be a bit simple okay and this is their uh, their their argument because there is uh, no difficulty adjustment based on periods basically there's no having they're ad adjusting difficulty for every block like zcash right um the uh, initial goal was to optimize the proof of work by reducing the energy consumption without sacrificing security so basically there's no having and the way they increase or adjust the difficulty the hash rate difficulty um is block by block rather than every periods which is uh, like if you compare it to bitcoin it's every four years type of thing so their whole algorithm the way they do the useful proof of work is somewhat unique and ultimately 
really, really, really useful in that case uh, because, um, you know, the, a lot of the contention, like I said, is because, you know, proof of work burns a lot of energy and it's not good for our environment. Well, we're finding solutions to that problem, guys. And as we find solutions to that problem, I think we can start moving forward. Let's continue. We got um, Alephium Tokenomics, guys. This is where the magic happens. Again, another Medium blog post. Unfortunately, this should be on the main website in a nice, well-documented way. And this is where the magic happens. Okay, let me zoom in here a little bit so you can, we can see this a bit better. Um, we can see that the total emissions um, over time, and I'm, I'm, I just want to be clear, it's in. It meant, it's going to take many years. I think it's 82 years. Yes, 82 years from the main launch, which is in 2021. Okay, so it's been around for a bit, and it's picking up a bit of interest here. Um, we can see that it's going to take plenty of years to get the total emissions to be fully diluted. In the meantime, we have to focus on the fact that the genesis, which means when this token, this coin was actually released, when the project was launched, um, over four uh, over four years, there's going to be a vesting period, but we're going to have the genesis tokens, which re represent basically 140 million tokens. The rest of them are going to take 80 years to get distributed, but they're all going to be set to rewards to miners. Mining is going to get 860 million tokens, and the Genesis that are currently holding have about 140 million. Now, the ratio here, the allocation to Genesis is small. As you can see, it's not big. However, guys, it's still an amount of capital. We got to understand that that's the case. Now, what? how is that distributed in sales? You got 80 uh, million, and then you have the team and treasury, 30 million, and then you got the ecosystem development, I guess for um, you know um, helping the ecosystem grow, you're looking at another 30 million. So the reality is you got a chunk. It's not a huge chunk, but there is a chunk. Now, my question is not that it it's so, so valid because really it's a small portion, but I like to uh, question, how, who is in charge of the of these wallets? These ones right here, the ecosystem wallet, the team and treasury wallet, and the sales wallet. Who is in charge here, and how? Who's going to make the choices and the determination of uh, where these tokens are going to get distributed um, when they do get unlocked over the next four years? Now, of course, the risk of dilution is not there because it's going to take four years for them to enter the market. So even if they just randomly distribute it, uh, whatever, in, 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 or maybe the team is going to do it whichever way they feel, it's not going to be too much dilution here. There's not going to be too much sell pressure because again, the token unlocks, the coin unlocks are going to take four years. And not only that, it's a small portion. Okay. So we're in a good, we're in a good state here. Um, mining emissions, uh, like I said, uh, 860 million alpha will be mined, and we can talk about the the uh, um, deflationary forces. 100% of the transaction fees are going to be burned, so there's a burning mechanism here. Proof of less work, which required coin burning when it's to be triggered. So again, the actual consensus mechanism requires that there's a, a, a bit of uh, burning happening. So that's the deflationary forces, which we kind of already talked about. The genesis allocation, we talked about that as well. And you can see sales allocation over time. Sales out three sales events, which is pre-sale and private sale. These tokens will also be unlocked bit by bit. But again, just keep in mind, although this is the case, it's not really classified as fair launch here because there was a pre-sale and a private sale. It's just an extreme um, uh, small amount. It is extremely small, and it's going to take years for them to get unlocked. And as you can see, there's an unlock schedule of, of these tokens. So just keep that in mind. Um, what else do we have here? Lots of good tokenomics. A lot of good um transparency here so ecosystem ecosystem and treasury allocation over time they will get released and they will be issued somehow to get the help the ecosystem going and of course some good frequently asked questions that could help you iron out some uh, ambiguity and of course you jo join that their discord and ask questions that's a great way to get um, a lot of that information so you can get fundamentally bullish um and, and so on Good stuff here. Overall, lots of transparency, and they're it's full on taking full advantage of this medium platform to get this information out there. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? I'm on the fence about that. I prefer everything well documented in the official website so that we know it's official, official information.
instead of a blog all right let's move on uh what else do we got here uh let's kind of go back to the main website and dig around and see if we can poke around and find some more stuff i think that we covered all the main things really like i i've i've, I've seen careers if you're interested of course you want to contact privacy policy and all of that and you click here back to the top you can see the website's decently built nice and clean i like that essentials what else do we got here the bridge if again if you want to bridge over to the ethereum network that's still i'll get a wrap um, alf um, explorer which we talked about the wallets build a dap and community guys we covered it all here on the website now the question is was it enough you know did we get bullish enough fundamentally guys it's quite it's quite good i like it i'm bullish um i think it could be an up-and-coming uh, ecosystem and the best part is um you know there is some other aspects that i don't really see here but they use dag technology which is pretty i'm i'm, I'm actually um um worried about why they don't have this on the main website because um you know dag is also another concept that is quite quite uh popular nowadays and it allows for that the the speed aspect of things so i'm curious about that one but regardless let's get going um uh, let's take a look at some of the metrics here the uh token coin metrics right now it's at about two dollars and 44 cents um a lot of the information that i have there should be valid because i did produce um my uh, deep dive yesterday which means that we did get a bit of flux of fluctuation but not so much market cap 178 million dollar market cap which means that there's a bit of growth here still right we're not a large cap we're barely a mid cap okay so this is the thing guys it's quite early here still we can have a real good run here to a billion dollars very easily and that means that you've got a good 5x easily to get into this into uh, alifium at least if you're going to get to a billion dollars in this bull run it could definitely happen okay so just keep that in mind i like to be very modest about my targets and we'll talk about targets later uh, as we get into the uh, wrapping it up uh, my conclusion here fully uh, diluted a uh, 470 million dollars and fully diluted we got to understand that the total supply currently is only 194 million but we expect a max supply of a billion coins right as we finish off all the mining and all the rewards get issued in fully diluted state we are going to have a billion tokens so something to understand that it's going to take 83 years to achieve that so it's not going to happen anytime soon so we got to keep an eye on the total supply generally speaking because that's what we're going to be able to monitor as the um the coins uh, get um issued to the market okay so let's keep that in mind trading volume is quite low in my opinion i would like a little bit more and we'll talk about that in a second percentage wise i look at at least i would like to see about five to ten percent of trading volume but it's a small ecosystem we're getting there right so layer one that is small and it's up and coming so don't expect too too much but a sign of health is a lot of volume and transaction rate okay website we have we already talked about uh again don't get confused about this because we see the contract and that is just a wrapped wrapped alf um that is on the ethereum network they have their own contract their own um um explorer they have their own program language as we as we um, already spoke about guys not bad it's listed on mexi and a few others not bad at all all right guys so you guys know that i produce an infographic for you guys every week when i do these deep dives and i'm going to give you my verdict here okay well, and then we'll get into some price action we'll talk about the charts we'll look at where we can scale in but for now let's just wrap up this fundamental right we can see that the um overall ecosystem is good for its size it is absolutely good uh we got to understand within its lane it has uh some good stuff going for it i'm expecting a continuation they do definitely put a lot of effort into their ecosystem growth the utility um of the actual coin itself as a layer one you're not going to expect some major stuff and it particularly it is a, a proof of work so you're not going to have major liquidity pools at the current moment or anything there could be one in the future if that happens privately or anything like that but really transaction fees rewards and burning mechanism is what really this token is going to be used for in the immediate short term so i'm bullish not bad 10 out of 10 for me roadmap everything is clear okay we gotta understand everything is clear they do talk about what they're what they want to achieve in the in the future and what they're working on but a little bit more details with regards to timing more or less you know it doesn't have to be accurate to the date to the day or to the hour what we not want to know is like maybe quarterly to explain or you know where we're going in the next quarter what focus um are they putting and of course you know i understand putting the date keeps you accountable but at the same time that's what we kind of want from a team a team that is willing to be accountable because that shows confidence and again back to the team the team itself you know details about the team would be very very useful to get bullish we the, the team wants 
wants us to be bullish. The team not only wants to, us to be bullish on the tech, but on them, right? And of course, yeah, when you see a, a project that is somewhat of a fair launch, because it's not a 100% fair launch, but it is fa fairly fair and uh, decentralized, we uh, they expect that maybe the team is not as important. But I'm going to say the team is super, super important because it shows us who is actually involved and the connections and the experiences that they have and what they bring to the table. So I highly suggest all teams out there, whether you think it's valuable or not, um, if you gonna get into a project and, and, and expect the mainstream society to get involved, the best way to do it is to give us a bit of your background. And it's not means, it doesn't mean that you gotta get super, super detailed, but I wanna know if you have been part of any other Web3 projects in the past or uh, what connections you may have and so on and so forth. So for that reason, nine out of 10, but still really bullish pretty good uh socials i'm not i'm on the fence on the socials why because they're down their stats are down for the last 30 days in comparison to previous 30 days so they got 300 uh sorry 34 000 followers on x which is decent for their size of course but lately their engagement has been down the amount of followers that they're getting is down approximately 40 percent in comparison to the previous month which is kind of like not the greatest given the fact that we are in a bull rally and you know right now this is where we need to have a lot a lot of hype and it could be directly related to the fact that their posts are down right they have 271 posts on x for the last 30 days but in comparison to the previous 30 days they're down approximately four percent now i know it's not a lot but in fact in this current state that the market has been in within the last month or so we've been a bit sideways ish in the market okay not the best in the last couple weeks but not, it, it doesn't mean that you're going to stop right you need to that's in fact where you should be wrapping things up so socials not bad but i would like to see a little bit more effort there and to see what's going on with the follower count and the tokenomics are pretty decent here 10 out of 10 for the tokenomics vesting schedule uh, is very clear and straightforward eight years to be fully diluted the rest of the 85 percent are definitely going to be um, introduced to the market via mining reward so that's healthy definitely good healthy typical uh, token distribution wallets are fairly well balanced so lots of liquidity for the exchanges exchanges and that's what you kind of want is be able to withstand any vo uh, volume that enters the market um the liquidity is very very important um uh, partnerships decent partnerships within their size we got bitcoin association and flux labs and many many others so really good i'm happy to see that they're active within a community and building strong partnerships and um relationships and the exchange listings of course eight out of ten is good because uh ultimately got mexi bitmart a uh, uniswap obviously liquidity on there and gate and many others however we're waiting for major exchanges here guys and that would give it at a 10 to 10 we want binance or or coinbase or some uh, or maybe um uh kucoin even still to have a bit more so we can get more volume um and exchange listings there so not bad however major exchanges binance and coinbase have yet to list the, the coin so that's something that we can look forward to um and a trading volume is still very small so we potentially have a, a lot more interest left here to see um, activity and that's a good sign that um perhaps we're early in the sense that if you get in now and if you start looking for um, a position at this level as soon as the trading volume comes in and a lot of market participation enters the market at least you'll have front run that entry because right now we're only getting not even one percent of the trading volume in comparison to the overall uh, supply so or the mark you know what i mean so the max supply being at one billion we have a very little amount now if you compare it to the total supply it's a, a bit better obviously but really um you know not really the the, the majority we want a little bit more volume here basically what i'm saying here so let's move on what else what's my verdict my verdict is number one we are in a, a layer one scenario we are in a proof of work but i want to say that it's a simplified a soup of a, a proof of work which basically is um a scenario where it's a lot more efficient and effective for uh, the um for so that we can introduce a little bit more savings into the amount of energy that we produce or, or use here and that is going to give a lot of a lot more value as far as all um you know basically combating a lot of those negative things that proof of work um has against it at the current moment it is dag and it is a smart contract really re interesting stuff here emission schedule uh depends on the network hash rate and timestamp of course the emission schedule has a lot to do with um you know the daily uh, um the, the daily hash rate the mining rewards are uh, dynamically adjusted with each block 
block instead of being adjusted based on periods like halvings and so on it's a block by block it's being adjusted which is um, quite interesting it's innovative and something that we haven't really seen out there yet the remaining 140 million alf um 14 percent of the max supply is were minted with the genesis block for the ecosystem sales team and treasury allocation which we talked about it's only 14 percent however that 14 percent um still doesn't have a clear direction as who's calling the shots and how are they going to be deployed and where they're going to be spent and so on and so forth it could be that the team is going to be making those decisions decisions but it'd be great to have a bit more information on the team so we can get bullish on that team that they're going to make a great decisions there uh, most alf which is 86 percent of the supply 860 million will be a mined over 82 years and basically given to the uh, uh miners as rewards over 82 year period guys that's going to take a long long time so we're going to have to depend on the total supply to understand what actual uh, supplies that they're um available into the market right so we're going to see that it's going to take some time here wrapped alf is available via bridge to ethereum uh which maybe some of you are interested in from what is provided the team looks solid like i said but it would be super good to see who's behind the team now my target here guys i use caspa cas as the benchmark now it's a very modest one of course cas is a great great technology uh, great technology great player right now in this bull rally that we've been experiencing it has done very very well and its market cap has grown significantly but it uh, tech wise they're very very similar now if it if it does get to the value of caspa market cap size wise you can expect that uh alf uh, will probably get to about 44 dollars more or less that's a 17 18 x which is quite modest in my opinion given the fact that bull runs sometimes bring these altcoins to much much higher levels however modesty is key here guys don't be greedy at the end of the day if we hit 50 dollars it would be a time for us to basically get into a very defensive strategy and um you know figure out ways to defend those gains because you definitely after a 20x run to the upside you want to be able to um retain those gains because the market tends to want to take them back so what i really would suggest is instead of worrying about a final price target of where this could lead let's watch these markets carefully because at any sign of weakness especially once we start getting into a very frothy bull run um we would have to start getting the Offensive. and of course that target more or less out about that 50 dollars might be the area where we need to start doing that so trailing up stop losses taking a bit of profit scaling out dc ain't out you know is the is the way to do it once we get to these levels and if it continues running great of course alpha is bullish and we should see some good targets however guys we're gonna have to take it day by day and the best way to do that is you know follow the channel of course click the bell join the discord the community because we're gonna be helping each other find those tops when the time comes all right guys um, I know you're here to talk about a bit of price action, so let's do that. Let's take a look at what's going on here with the ALF price. At the end of the day, it's been going a bit sideways for the last little while. We can see a bit of choppy price action after a bit of a dip here on the four hour, but I want to get onto the daily here and see what's going on. The daily at the end of the day is holding up fairly nicely. However, it didn't get into an extreme zones. And the question is, do we get to the extreme levels before we get that bounce? Let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Um, you know, ultimately, I, you guys know that I like to see extremities. I want volatility. That gets me interested. That gets me excited because I know that's where most likely we'll get reactions. Now, you can see here on the daily we are at a good level of horizontal support it's fairly de decent we got the point of control at about two dollars and 44 cents uh, we got this previous high right here we got this cluster pretty much this bottom all holding up potentially trying to find some support we got this top top right here that you can see the wick even came right down to touch that level and we got this volume gap but that is desperately trying to hold up the bulls are trying to protect this area because if we do fall through it's likely that we start looking for support at the bottom of the volume gap which is at a nice round number of two dollars which is very possible that we get there the only thing that i can say is that despite all of this good bullish horizontal support the rsi has not got into an oversold state which means that it's very possible that that happens it's possible that we get oversold and come down for a further continuation to the downside after this consolidation resolves itself so this is how you uh basically uh, anticipate um you know that it could happen and at the same time be prepared that we do get a bounce 
is to start building a position bit by bit. DCAing is a great strategy here. You can see that you're not, number one, not buying the top. It's in a decent retracement. Let's look at a Fibonacci for a second. Swing low to swing high. Let's keep that a bit loose. You can see that we are contending with the golden pocket as we speak. We fell below, try to hit that 786, bought up real quick, and now we're dealing with the golden pocket range, which statistically speaking, based on Fibonacci theory, we should hold some support and maybe get some relief to the upside. The MACD didn't give us anything yet. EMAs are still facing down. We got red histogram bars. Yes, they're pale pink, and they're slowly... Um, diminishing to the upside, getting potentially into the bullish control zone. But don't front run this, guys. Be patient because as of now, you can see the MACD showing us that the strength of the bearish trend is still in, in, in basically strong. And there's a bit more to it giving us that idea that we could get oversold but lately i've been looking at the stochastics the stochastics are generally a great oscillator to kind of look at when we get in oversold conditions because you can see that the stochastics already got oversold and many times when we get oversold in the, the stochastics we do not get oversold in the rsi which means that there's a lot more volatility in the stochastics and sometimes when we're in a very very strong trend whether it be bullish or bearish in this case we're in a bull trend the reset on the rsi are very very um weak and we don't get all the way to oversold conditions and you can see that the rsi did pinpoint a nice retracement a nice oversold buy opportunity right here now the question is is this the next buy opportunity after this retracement seeing the rsi get to this level maybe we go sideways and get a pop to the upside and get overbought again and the macd potentially giving giving us that ema cross so what i would say is at this current moment based on the daily the best way to plan the this is to understand that we could get oversold and stay oversold on the stochastics for a bit and stay in a very bearish uh, position here on the MACD for a little bit more. So that way you can DCA at lower levels. However, getting some skin in the game just in case it does get that bounce is not a bad idea. And that's why, you know, DCA is a great strategy. Now, what I want to do is kind of zoom out here and kind of squeeze this price action together. And I want you to notice how there's a huge amount of volume in here without a major breakout. That's the reality. I have a feeling what, what's happening here is that the majority of the market right now, the market participation is still in an accumulation phase. We're building, building, building bullish sentiment here, accumulating our bags, getting ready for the actual breakout. And, and as we can see, the actual breakout is going to be above the $4 level. Once we break above the $4 level, we're going to get a, a nice pop to the upside. And that in that case, you're going to see all of this price action to be a very strong accumulation range that should have been taken advantage of. Now, what about from a bearish perspective, we have a bottom of the range type of accumulation level, which is pretty much all the way down here, right? We can say it's here. Obviously, we can see a spike of volume, an empty volume gap, and then we can see this bottom right here. So just keep in mind that it's not that clear on the way down either. And we're pretty much 50% in the chop zone. And if we use a horizontal um, tool here on a trading view and we get this and we kind of overlay it real quick and we put that on that side and we bring this down, you can see the um, spider line of the heart line is pretty much at the point of control and pretty much respecting this top this bottom and this bottom very very accurately so we can say that we are contending with the heart line of this sideways channel and it's very likely that we could come down to the bottom of the range this is why i am saying dca is a great strategy we get oversold we're likely to come down to about a dollar fifty okay guys and that would be a great opportunity to buy so what i'm going to be doing is this i'm going to be putting a arrow in here to say look right now is not bad we retraced we're at the golden pocket we're at the 200 um we're, we're at the um sorry we're at the, the point of control we are hitting bottoms and tops and a, a lot of good volume here for support however guys we can't negate the fact that we could come down into oversold conditions and look for other bottoms which again a dollar 50 ish is probably where i'll be interested in buying the dip again so right around this level and of course based on this low and these lows and the volume kind of diminishing significantly i feel like we should keep that in mind and have a dca strategy right around this level i'll put this a green arrow up a little bit it's not that clear as can be seen guys so just be careful because we got some peaks and valleys here in the volume that both the this uh, peak and valley and this peak and valley could also act as support going down so we don't know exactly we're going to get support if we break down but this leads me to believe that we'll get a decent entry if we do come down and get oversold here so not bad let's get quickly into the four hour and see what's happening with this current support zone you can see that there is divergence we're making a little 
slightly lower lows on the price action or even if you want to call them a triple bottom that's fine we see that the rsi is still moving up which means that's either cl class a or even class b bullish divergence regardless regardless it is diverging what bothers me is that we're below the 200 ema on the four hour and since there's no 200 daily ema we're gonna have to rely on the 200 four hour ema which right now it's below and you can see that cross of all these emas on the four hour to the downside however this is the uh, optimal time to see a bounce given the fact that we're getting the divergence we're coming from oversold conditions on the four hour and it's likely that we get a little bit of a pop to the upside and we're also seeing bitcoin today do fairly well a nice little bounce to the upside two and a half percent give or take which is a very strong indication that we might have a green week um in the in the, in the next couple of days the macd ema cross ready to go maybe we get into the bullish control zone maybe we get into the uh, a few nice green instagram bars it's been consolidating nicely for the last little while within a nice tight range with not much major volatility and it's due for an expansion phase big picture we are due for an expansion phase here on alf the question is do we come down for a little bit of a dip and buy the dip out again at about a dollar fifty ish more or less and then bounce to the upside and maybe start breaking out to higher levels or do we get this bounce as a confirmation high sorry confirmation low a higher low and getting back testing the previous resistance as support and then we start bouncing and breaking out here and then then it's too late guys this is why it's important that we dca and we gain exposure to the asset over time rather than trying to pinpoint the actual bottom guys if i've offered you any value in this deep dive obviously you know what you got to do you got to slap that like button it does really help out with the algorithm and getting this channel going um if you want to follow me on the socials the links are in the description below feel free to join that discord guys the discord is where it's at uh, lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and the learning material the best part is it's absolutely free guys i'll see you tonight at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip